you just have this experience now in Chicago public schools and, you know, from the media and stuff like that, you kind of hear like a lot of bad representation in, in regards to, I guess, what's going on. It might be accurate, but a lot of crime and violence and things like that. So like, what advice do you give to those students, I guess, in regards to that? Because now mm -hmm. a lot of them are just kind of immune to it, I, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah, like uh, immune is a great word, and um, it's like hopelessness. Like there's a dark cloud of hopelessness under, you know, some of our younger generation, you know, about even a possibility. So one of the main things for me is just inspiration. Yeah. Just letting you know you do have other options, um, you know. And um, it can be taxing, though. Like, you got to be built for it. You got to mean it, you know, because uh, vicarious trauma is real, um, you know. So losing a student can definitely have an impact on a teacher. Like, you done had this child in your classroom all year, and now they got killed in any type of way. But in Chicago, um, what I was sharing with you earlier is, yeah, for my time. So at first, I um, worked on the uh, north side. Didn't only I worked there what about three years? Didn't lose any kid, you know. Maybe had one get shot, had two get shot. Didn't lose none though. Went to the south side, the school I was at, lost a, lost a kid every year. Multiple shot, but lost one every year. You know, I was there four years. You know, yeah. and that can get taxing, and you know it's hard to get used to. But that's me working in that um community what about the kids who live in, in that community, community? Yeah. how many people they can name in the last year you know young people yeah. under, uh, like under 21 you know like that's serious trauma right there um you know and for me the one thing to answer that question about what one thing i tell them is just you got options you know and and i just try to let them know all your options because a lot of time it's like one thing my dad can't stand and is a coach or a, a coach or definitely a like sports announcer who trying to be critical and give feedback and stuff and you ain't never did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like you, you ain't never did it and you can't do it right now. So I really don't need your opinion. My dad was always like, go find somebody who done did it. And then just so you got the, you know what I'm saying, uh, the full range of knowledge. So if you're in the hood, if you're in the street, and your family, because that's one thing I learned. Game banging is real in Chicago. Yeah, for sure. I went game banging here. It was about what side of town you stayed on, Bordeaux. I lived in Bordeaux. I used to rep the north side in the Palladium every now and then. <laughs> and like 328, uh, I used to rep Bordeaux. Yeah. But I went game banging like that. Yeah. It was like what side of town you on. And, you know, Chicago, nah, it's generations of game bangers. I done had game banging granddaddies. And, and that ain't no uh, pun. That's straight up, you know what I'm saying? Granddaddy still game banging. Yeah. So think about the household and environment that child is in when your granddaddy game banging. So who is this child who's still impressionable? Cause they're a child. But if they go into advice about college, about you know what I'm saying, about entrepreneurship, about anything positive, who they getting it from? Now they probably still getting some good moral values about loyalty and trust and you know I, I i do believe in being street savvy yeah for sure being well-rounded they getting all that you know but um so yeah man it's really just to inspire to let them know that you got options man yeah no i like it and that's part of again why you came out with the b3 again is that correct oh yeah yeah for sure you know